Vanessa Valentine, your local genealogist, and I am teaching beginning genealogy for the Clayton County Library here in Jonesboro, Georgia. Rules for beginners. There are many different rules. The main rule is start from yourself and work backwards. What does that mean? It means that you need to write down who you are, who your parents are, who your grandparents are, and then go back from there. Determine what it is that you need and want to know. You need to determine and decide exactly what it is that you really want to know. Do you want to know about your parents and their backgrounds? your grandparents and their backgrounds? What if you are adopted? Is it your family that you're searching for? What if a member of your family does not know anything about their family? Are you trying to find out about them? These are some of the questions that many people are trying to use. Many people are trying to uh, solve the, the question all. Um, what about your hair color? What about your eye color? Maybe you're just concerned about your genealogical makeup. What do you need to do and how does genealogy come into play for that? There are many different reasons why people want to do genealogy and there are many different reasons why you need to predetermine and decide what it is you need to do. Whatever your goal is, you need to decide in advance what your goal is, what it is you're trying to find out, because that in fact will lead you to where you want to go and what you need to learn. Searching for treasures. I call this searching for treasures because you need to dig out all of those family treasures that you have at home. Many of us are really not even fully aware of what we have. We are so busy looking for the obvious. Let's look a little bit at the unobvious items that you may have in your home, such as old family albums, maybe an old postcard that is in your mother's treasure box. Maybe there are other items that you need to dig out, such as a family Bible. Maybe there are other items, maybe a school class picture, maybe a photo album that has been long buried that you never knew really existed. There are answers everywhere and there are treasures everywhere. Talk to your family members, find out what they know, see what they have in their treasure box. Check out your own family treasure box don't wait until a relative passes away before you decide to ask for this information. Preparing for your research. You must prepare and organize. If you are not organized in doing this type of research, you will run into many a problem. The reason being you're not prepared, as in any uh, profession, any profession, you need to prepare, you need to organize. Genealogy is no different. You must take on the task of shopping in your local stores for the office supplies. Office supplies departments become extremely important in genealogy. You need items such as paper clips, notebooks, sheet protectors, highlighters, pencils, pens, there are all kinds of items that will assist you in organizing your materials. You may think twice about doing this because you think, well, why do I need all of that? As you research, and the more you research, the more materials and information you will acquire. Once you acquire this information, you need to be able to put it somewhere. And once you place it somewhere, you don't want to lose it. Organization organization, organization is going to become extremely important for you. So please take your time, figure out what's comfortable for you. What do you think you need? Do you need a set of folders or binders? Do you need 
black ink pens, pencils. Keep in mind that many of the genealogical repositories do not allow you to bring ink pens into their facilities. They also don't allow you to bring other items. You need to check to see what those requirements are for wherever you're going to research. And then what do you have at home that you need to place your items in? Or you already have them. Maybe you have a box, maybe you have a book, shelf, or casing. What do you have at home that you can utilize for your genealogical research? Once you secure information, you have to put it somewhere. Let's not put everything piled on top of the table. You won't be able to find it later on. How do you start? Well, let's look at the chart. On the chart, this is considered a genealogical family tree chart. There are several different types of charts. Many people think that this is probably the only one. It is not. There are several different versions of the family tree chart. However, when you are a beginning genealogy, the one thing you need to do is to learn to record basic information. In order to record that information, you should use one of the charts or one of the forms that are specifically for that particular reason. Just recording information. Some of the charts that are available are called family charts. They literally are called that. You should take those charts and fill out as much information as you can. Everything that you know about yourself, about your parents, about your children, about your grandparents, etc. Fill in every piece of information you think you already know. And don't forget to verify. Verify, verify, verify. It's extremely important that you verify this information. Once you have recorded this information, you will see where your holes are. By holes, I mean the missing information. Take your highlighter and highlight that missing information. Once you have highlighted the information, it will help you to focus your research a little bit further. Where can you go to find this information? All of this information I keep referring to. There are many repositories around your community, in your state, in your region, and in other states and facilities that have this information. The first place you need to go is your local library. Many of you who live right here in the Clayton County area are welcome to come to the headquarter library. Here they have a genealogical section. Their section contains books and materials and information concerning genealogical research, some that may refer specifically to you and your family. You don't know until you come to search. There are also people here who can assist you with that kind of information. Occasionally, when the COVID-19 is over, classes that are free of charge to you will be conducted. When that happens, the library will inform you of such. Until then, please refer to some of the beginning genealogy books, materials, and information. But it doesn't matter where you live, beginning genealogy or whether you're advanced, every library has access to this information. They either have a genealogical room or they have a genealogical section. Those are the two areas you need to inquire about. When it comes to the computer usage, there are many people who are at home right now and they are happy, uh, playing around with computers and trying to figure out what to do with yourself. This is a great time to use your genealogical interests and put, them, put it to work. This is what you can do. Get on your local get on your computer. Check with your local library and access the genealogical programs that they have available. Every library has genealogical programs available to you free of charge, as long as you have a library card. Look up your families on these genealogical programs. Ancestry.com, of course, is the one that you see and hear about all the time. And of course, it is magnificent. 
However, there is also Family Search. FamilySearch.org is one of the other beginning genealogy programs, and it's not just for beginners, it's for everyone. These are the two biggest programs that contain genealogical information. You can access them both from home. FamilySearch.org can be accessed from home without the library. However, Ancestry.com cannot. It is a paid membership. If you want to have it consistently at your beck and call, then you need to pay for a membership. However, if you're going to use it occasionally, you may want to just go through your local library. In addition, there are also archives, regional, state archives, federal archives. We're lucky here in the Atlanta area because we have the National Archives located right here in Morrow. The National Archives has books and materials and information available to you free of charge as long as you are in the area. They are currently, of course, because of COVID-19, not available to you, but however, you can go online, you can access their materials and information online. They are doing as much as they can to make sure that you can access information that way. When they reopen, I'm sure that you will be welcomed. The State Archive, the Georgia State Archives is another location for those of you who are looking for Georgia-related persons. Georgia Archives maintains a treasure trove of information relating to Georgia people. However, they also have books, materials, and information for other states and that makes it a lot more interesting. Please contact them directly to find out what their current position is in terms of uh, visitors and visitation. However, keep in mind they do have lots of materials and information available to you. In addition to those facilities, there's also your local universities. Check with and around all of your local universities. Each one of them also contains and maintains genealogical information. You also need to check your local genealogical and historical societies. Every state in the United States has a genealogical or historical societies, but they're even more intimate than that because they have those facilities, those groups and organizations on the local levels. Whatever area you're trying to access, there's probably a genealogical or historical society located in that particular town or community. Check with those facilities as well. They are more than happy to assist you in whatever you're trying to find. Frequently, they know things that other people do not, including members of your family. Reason being, they are local people themselves. They have lived in the area, they have grown up in the area, and they are very, very familiar with what's going on in their community and who live there. Check with them. Find out from them if they know anything, if they have anything, if they can assist you in any way. Now, fees, it will cost. Extraordinary fees, rarely. Frequently, you're going to be uh, charged with copy costs wherever you go. Be prepared. Sometimes you will have to send in money in advance for their services. Sometimes it's just a small fee right on site. It depends on what you're requesting, what you're requiring, and how much you need. If there is a fee, you will see it written or predetermined before you enter any of these facilities. Check out their websites first and they will tell you everything you need to know. Now that we've been through all the details of how a beginner begins, let's get you started in really, really learning about genealogy. You will find that information is power. Your power is going to be on your lineage genealogical sheet. The form that you are now looking at is one that will help all beginners 
start at the beginning. What we need you to do is to take this form and to write in and fill in all the information that you currently know. This is where we begin. So, what do you know? Have you gathered your information? Do you know your mom's real name? Do you know her birth, her, your dad's birth? Do you know their locations? Do you know where they were born? Do you know who their parents were? If you don't know this information, gather it. Once you have, take this sheet and begin filling it in. Let's get started. Begin at the beginning. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time with another segment of Beginning Genealogy.